Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 44. Today we're going to be looking at two simplex horns that look really similar on the outside but actually operate quite differently on the inside and I'm sure for those who have watched enough of these videos you already know exactly what's going on with these two horns. Um, so the horn that's all by itself over in the middle, that is a simplex electronic horn. It is a model number 4901-9822. Um, this is the one that has the uh, electronic horn that kind of, sort of, sounds like a true alert. It sounds more like a uh, Wheelock EHS DL1, um, but it has that same sort of high-pitched tone that the original true alert series had. Over on the left-hand side, that horn that's mounted on the retrofit strobe plate, this is an electromechanical horn. It's a model number 4901-9805. This one uses the newer Faraday mechanism that has the circuit board on the back um, instead of the mechanical contact to generate the pulses to the electromagnet. Um, as we all know, that didn't work out as well as they hoped, and the the horns that have that mechanism on, on them don't really sound that great. I have one or two that surprisingly sound really good, but this is not one of them, so um, you'll notice that this horn is pretty rough and uneven as it sounds. Um, it's mounted on that retrofit strobe plate. That is, according to the label on the back, a model number 4903-9105. Although I know every time that this shows up in a video, um, we always have a discussion on what the model number should be. Uh, I think we've narrowed it down to the fact that this is either just a, a different revision of the 9105 or that this is a mislabeled unit because of all the documentation that we've been able to pull on this unit seems to indicate that um, for some reason that model number doesn't match up with this device so we're still not fully sure what's going on with that. Um, since the 9805 is mounted right on the strobe plate and is wired in that device is going to be in continuous um, so that the strobe has constant power. On the other hand the electronic horn is going to be coded to code 3 from the panel. So that'll uh, at least break up the noise a bit so that we can hear the difference between the two horns as they're sounding instead of just mixing into a, a solid gobbledygook of noise. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the pulse stations we have for today and then we can get started. For the poles today, since we have simplex devices up above, we have a simplex 4251-20 T-bar over on the left hand side of the screen. Over on the right hand side, we have a Cerberus Pyrotronics MS-157 pull station. Um, this doesn't go with the Simplex devices. Uh, it's probably about as far away as you can get from matching a Simplex system, but I put it up because I think it's a really cool pull and I realized when I was looking through the shelves to find what to use today, I hadn't used this in quite a while. So um, This looks identical to the MS-151. The differences on the back, this actually has two separate sets of contacts within the switch, so you could hook this up to two different systems for whatever sort of application you might need an arrangement like that for. Um, but I think for today, we're probably going to start things off with the Simplex T-Bar. Alright, and now we can go ahead and activate it. Like I said, the mechanical horn sounding really rough is going to be on continuous and the electronic horn is going to be on code 3. So here we go. silence the panel off camera there. That is a really loud setup for these two devices. Um, you heard that the 9822 ran a little bit longer because the panel was coding it to code 3 and um, 
when the SXLEX has a NAC set on code 3, it always finishes that round of code before silencing it. Um, however, the NAC with the 9805 was set on continuous, and those along with the march time NACs get silenced instantly when the button is pressed. Um, so now we can go ahead and go back down to the pull station and activate the MS-151, or 157. And let's go ahead and pull it. So now both circuits are silenced again. The strobe, like I said earlier, is wired straight into the 9805, so we don't have audible silence on this setup. Um, and now we can go ahead and reset the two pull stations. The 157 is a really easy station to reset. You just insert an Allen wrench and turn, and it pops right back up. This actually is how the whole station comes apart. You can take the cover off. It's a separate piece. It's kind of similar to how uh, Gamewell tried to do the M69 series pull stations, except for the difference there being that this one works really well when it comes apart, but the, uh, the Gamewell station tends to jam up, and that design didn't work out too well. But let's move on to the Simplex station. And then this one, we just insert the key, as always and reset. And now we can go ahead and reset the panel. Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and reset the DMP system. I silenced this while the horns were still running, so it kind of hasn't made any sort of appearance in the video yet, um, but it did activate in the background as always. You can see that uh, Halon system trouble is listed on the screen because if you remember from a couple system tests back, I don't have two um, SLA battery packs to keep both panels out of trouble right now. Um, because one of them died and I, I can't recharge it. So um, I'll be getting another one shortly though so that the whole system can be trouble free once again. So that'll be a nice change so we don't have to see that uh, those indicators on the enunciator lit up for the trouble condition every time we look over there from now on. So that's all the system test content I have planned for today. So thank you guys for watching. Um, with the short mention of the Halon system while we were resetting the DMP keypad, I want to give you guys a little preview slash heads up about the next system test. Um, this whole board, including the SXLEX, the DMP system, and the Halon system, are all wired together as the same system. Um, it all operates you know, together. Um, it's all interconnected. But most of my system tests focus in over on the SXLEX system, and a lot of times the, the Halon system portion doesn't even make it into the video. And the last time that I think it played a major part in a system test was system test 18, um, where I did a part of it, I activated the Halon system. And then the last time that the Halon system has been the focus of the system test videos was from back before I even thought about building the other board in system tests 1 through 6, um, which were filmed when I was probably 10 or 11, so you can imagine how the quality on those was. But anyways, um, the gist of this is the next system test, I'm going to be focusing exclusively on the Halon system. It's going to be kind of going back to the uh, the good old days. 
um, when this was the only system here. And I'll be going back over all the features on this panel um, that are probably shown in system tests 1 through 6, but um, this, uh, this second rendition will be a little bit less cringeworthy to watch, I hope. So please stay tuned for that. That'll be coming out. Um, probably several weeks to a month after this video is released. Um, and yeah, so that should be pretty fun. So thank you guys for watching. Keep an eye out for that next system test video with the Halon system here. And uh, have a great day.